So I had a request which I thought was pretty interesting for the amateur players and also maybe upcoming youngsters, uh, players that are joining uh, tournament play competition. Somebody asked me, how do you how do you warm up? How do you warm up for an event? And in, when you think of the question first, you think, ah, it's a basic question. You just warm up, you hit some balls. But there's more to it because I've also been there where, uh, for example, you're playing a tournament and there's different kinds of tables. Or you're playing a tournament like the Moscone Cup and you have a practice table and you come into the arena and you're not allowed to practice and the table is just ice. It's brand new, warm, slides like mad. And how do you get ready for that? Well, I wrote two scenarios down because I had to think about it a little bit. You're, when, when you're thinking about warming up for, tape, for, for competition, I think... There's two scenarios. Your first scenario is that you have to get comfortable with the table you're gonna play on as quick as possible. That's your, that's your first goal. So if you haven't hit any balls on that table, you gotta get comfortable with the quick. Now, if we're talking about a tournament or a uh, big bar table tournament or leagues, uh, and all the tables are the same. What you want to do, you want to get there at least an hour before your first match. You want to chit chat to your uh, friends, colleagues, uh, do your social thing. That's where a lot of fun comes in, right? But get that out of the way before you're going to get down to business and warm up. If you walk in 20 minutes before and start talking to everybody, you have no time left. So I suggest get there ahead plenty of time if all the tables are the same, jump on a table and start playing the game with somebody or by yourself. Just play the game. Don't set up one shot or it's not time to do drills really. It's time to just feel the table and get sharper. So if you're playing with somebody who's running out all the time, then say after 20 minutes, hey, I need, I need some time for myself because otherwise I'm not hitting any balls. So that's, that's the first tip. Get there ahead of time, right? Now the second thing is, don't, don't set up, uh, if, you, if you don't have so much time before your match, say you got five minutes, don't set up like a, like a stop shot pattern. That's not going to do anything for you. If you're setting up, if you're setting up something like this, that's not going to do anything. You're drawing the ball, stop, stop, roll. What? You're not getting anything out of the table. So, uh, my suggestion is you set up a layout where it's a little bit challenging for you. Uh, like put the balls on the rails, for example, a little bit. You want to get the speed for the table. You want to see... Uh, maybe then a long one, and then you got to come back, see from the three, you have to do a couple of rails for the four, maybe put the five here, something like this, spread them out a little bit, use, use some rails, okay? Um, maybe shoot a few banks, shoot a few breaks, that's huge, right? In rotation games, 10 ball, 9 ball, the break is on a, on a good level, the break is half the game. So you want to get a few breaks in if you can. See where the, where the table breaks good from. That's critical. Uh, if you have plenty of time, maybe shoot a couple of kicks. See if the table's playing long. For example, you can do what I do is uh, come from the corner pocket on a normal club table with high outside English, you go one, two, three to this corner. And it comes from hitting the second diamond. So you can see if your table is playing like that, or if it's playing any different. And this is still a pretty new cloth, so it's coming long. I didn't even chalk yet. 
So that means if you have a, a new cloth, you gotta adjust your kicks. So this one I have to hit a little higher. See, it's gonna slide down there towards the corner. For a two railer, for example, it's this diamond to the second diamond here should lead to the corner pocket. It's a little bit harder, it's decent. I thought I was going to slide more. See, that's pretty good. That angle works pretty good. You can test that. Shoot a couple of banks. Get a good feel for the table. Okay, now, that's scenario one. Get comfy with the table. The second thing, no, I wasn't ready yet. Big tip, some players, uh, some players, they start uh, shooting these kind of shots, guys. You've all seen this. They do something like this on a table they have to play on. Right, they start looking. How's my table rolling? You like that? They start looking for a mistake in the table. Throw them off a little bit there. Um, but they start looking for mistakes in the table. Now, it, that's not going to do anything for you, I believe, because you may not have to roll a ball in the entire match and it's going to put you in a negative mindset because you're going to be thinking about hmm, this table rolls off weird there and now you're totally out of your, your power plan, right? You want to go in there, you want to play positive competitive pool you don't want to be thinking about hmm, the table's a little funky there and I might have to be careful there that's going to put you in doubt mode you're going to be doubting yourself, the equipment there's nothing positive about that. So I would not suggest doing that, guys, okay? That's just a big tip for me. Uh, then, scenario number two. Let's say you know the tables. You've played in the event. Uh, you played a couple matches. And now, for example, you're doing well in the tournament. You had to wait for an hour. You come back and it's quarterfinal time. Just an example, right? What are you going to do? Now, now it's not a matter anymore of getting comfortable with the table because your brain has adjusted to it. Right? Sometimes you play the match, you come back, your brain has done all the work. You don't have to analyze anything about the table. It adjusts at the feel and the speed and it delivers it back in your arm. So what do you need? It's, it's about getting ready. It's about getting sharp and focused. That's what it is for. So you want to get your arm loose, you want to get sharp and focused for your match. So, I suggest to get sharp, you, you hit a few racks, but you start with a tough opener, right? Maybe a long shot, maybe a, um, a cut shot, a, a tricky opener. I learned that from Strickland. Strickland said that years ago. He says... Uh, if you're practicing racks, just running racks, you have to start with a tough shot because your opponent's going to leave you a tough shot. So it makes perfect sense. If, if I do uh, an hour of just random play, I'm spreading the balls out, I always take a tough opener because it helps me practice my shot making and it replicates match play. Uh, usually it comes down to a safety battle and I get the first peek at a ball, a, a tough long shot, that's how you have to start. So that's a good way to go into a match. Uh, the shot making is for focus and aiming and break, right? Remember, you got to break the balls. Break a few times. Now I forgot to say that also for getting a feel for the table, like a shot like this, I go three rails and see, go to the middle of the table, see how fast it is, something like that, or something like this. 
Try to go back there or try to come here. Just cut it in. See, I'm trying to come here so that's a little bit faster. Let's say I want to go up and down to where it is now. See something like that, you get a feel for the rails. Uh, that's about it, I think, for the for the warm-up. Oh yeah, we were gonna do a jump lesson. I thought that would be fun. Somebody asked me also about the jump, and we saw a couple of really nice jumps at the Moscone. So I was thinking I'm gonna show you my little my little secret circuit that I teach and uh, that you can practice yourself and uh, it's like, let's see, one, two, we can do four steps, four step circuit. Let's see how you can see this well. I'm going to start with a basic, nice and easy jump, like this, for example. Okay. Now, apparently this new generation, like Fedor and I think Albin and Kachi and Shane, Corey, they're all jumping like, like this. Now, with, with their arms sideways, I can't, I can't do it. I cannot do it, and maybe it has to do with my dominant eye, my right eye is dominant, and that's because I was born with a lazy eye on the left. My left eye is only 5%, so uh, that's why my cue is so, so much under my right eye. The doctors found out too late when I was young, and I had to wear the patch on my eye, it didn't help anymore. My sister has the same, she got it back to 60%, but for me it got stuck on 5. A lot of people don't know this, so I, uh, with my left eye, it's like daydreaming times 5. I cannot see the details in somebody's face. I can see colors and stuff, but that's it. So maybe that's why my cue or my arm wants to be straight. Anyway, so I, I, can't, I can't jump like this really. Um... What a lot of people do wrong on the jump is they get too excited about the result and instead of staying down in their angle, they get up too quick. So they want to see what's going on and that means, you can see it already, their cue goes down, the elevation's gone and they don't get over the ball, okay? So what I suggest so you keep your head still and you aim with your eyes. Your, eye, your eyes do the aiming and not, and not too much your head because then the cue will start, start dropping. Uh, another thing is, it's all about speed. It's not about delivering a perfect stroke. You need, a, you need speed to get that ball over there. So I'm going to de just demonstrate the wrong way real quick. Like somebody's... Somebody wants to see what's going on. A little bit exaggerated, of course, but you can see that it's almost a normal stroke. And here's one where some where you stay down in the line. And you see the you see the speed in the end. So that could be a nice starter. Then you can do a straight in shot. Just to get you going, something like this. And what's funny is, I learned to jump from Johan, Johan Ruising, when I was 17, 18, we're talking 25 years ago, and we were playing back then with Miyuchis, who were totally flexible, and we were, we were jumping with full cues. You know why? Because Strickland was jumping with a full cue. 
and you could get over balls with full cues. It was amazing. So we were practicing this jump with a, from here, I think something like this. We were practicing that with a regular plane cue, a regular wooden plane cue, no carbon, car, graphite shafts, anything. And we were getting the ball in. I mean, this was amazing practice for, for later in life, before the jump cues came out. That's how uh, Johan was a great jumper. And that's how we learned. And for me, it was great. It was uh, probably the foundation for why I jumped pretty, pretty well, because we were doing shots like this. And then if you get better, you can set it up like this. You know, but start like this. So you got the first one. Get your second one, let's take a couple of tries, remember stay down, that was good, See, so then it's, if you get over the ball good then it's all about aiming, I just treat it like a normal shot really for my alignment. There, it's pretty nice. And then just so take a couple of swings at that, right? Get comfortable with that. And then the biggest step, you can start pushing out for jumps. When you feel your jumps getting pretty good, now you can start pushing out. So let's say you're playing nine ball and you broke and you uh Broke the balls or whatever, and uh, or sometimes you don't even have to push out. Say this happens after the break, you could do this for just for example, right? If you're getting really good at it, or you can push out to this. Let's say it was, uh, let's say you were like that. Push out to here, boom, and now I just treat, for example, this shot as though I'm hitting it like a normal shot. So just stun with a little bit of outside. Woo! Too thin. I don't get to jump enough these days. <clears throat> so it's good. It's good to stay in touch with it. There, a little bit too hard. I was trying to get here, here, here. Let me try one more. But you see, I'm putting a little bit of that right spin on there to help it come out of the corner. do one of these for you guys. Come on now. A little bit lower. It's a little better. That's pretty good. So you can practice stuff like that. Now, this one, and I had a lot of fun with this one last year. I, I made this shot in uh, in a few matches on the Euro Tour, like this, you go back to old school. And big shout out to Staaf, Steven Verhaaren from Hague 5 in The Hague. Best pool room in the, in the country. Great action, great fun, a lot of passion. Staaf, 25 years ago, he was one of the first guys in Holland that could jump with a shaft over a ball. Right? And... Uh, now we can do it with the, with the regular jump stick, but it's a really good trick to have in your back. And you want to look at it, I think, like darts. You need a, you need a snappy wrist. You need, to, you need to snap your wrist to get the speed. It's all about the speed, guys, and the angle. So you can practice this one as well. Get close to the ball, put the cue under the eye. 
and see that speed? Bam! And I think for right-handed players it's a little bit tricky because usually they're left eye dominant. So you have to you have to find your alignment a little bit for your eyes. But in the end, you see the angle and the speed. Um, but you can use that for all kinds of shots. I, I did it at the Euro Tour, I believe I came in a position like this, something like this. And I came, I came all the way back down the table. I was like, I'm going to just try it. I was practicing it a little bit before. Boom. It's pretty nice. So, have some fun with that, guys. Um, let's see. If you have any questions about that, let me know. Yeah, somebody's asking me about the eye. Kane Kennedy, that's that's correct. But uh, with my eye, I was I was born with it, so I I, I don't know how uh, how it is to see normal depth perception. So my brain has made his own depth perception. Plus, on a pool table, the balls are laying still, uh, so it's always the same kind of depth. Now, if we were playing tennis or table tennis, something like that, I'm in deep trouble because I just don't know exactly when when the ball's exactly there, right? I have the most trouble when I have to pour like water into a glass, then I'm never 100% sure where the edge of the glass is. And that's why for me sometimes if I have to elevate uh, and play really uh, slow shots, it's harder for me to see when the cue ball is close to the, uh, when the tip is close to the cue ball, because I just don't have that same depth perception. So I get in trouble with that sometimes. Um, that's just how it is, but maybe for the jumps it helps me because I can get my cue there, I've jacked up shots, I have way better alignment than most players that are left eye dominant, see they cannot get that their head there, so <clears throat> that's how it is. Okay, let's do a little practice. Um, to be honest, I haven't been playing this much this week. I've been watching the Moscone a little bit. Um, I did about an hour a day, so this is just a nice uh, getting stroke a little bit, a couple of drills, and then also the last drill I want to show you is just I call it playful practice, and I'll walk you through that. In the end, first we're going to start off with the six-point star. We did this before. We put six balls on the table. Like this on the, mid, on the middle diamonds. All right, you take ball in hand. Let's see if that can go there. Put the balls here. And the goal is to run five balls in order. So we got one, two, eight, ten, thirteen. Play position for the fifteen, then put five new balls up. You go from fifteen to the lowest ball, you keep going. So when you get to the last ball, you have to put five new balls up and continue to run. Okay? And this shows you, it teaches you a lot of angles, speed, stroke. And when you get the hang of this, it's also just a ton of fun. It's just great practice. Get you back in stroke. Uh, shots like this. Let's see what we can do. So we go two eight. Do this for about fifteen minutes. See here, I want to get. If I get here, it's no good. I want to get about this angle. And then I can either draw it straight back, 
off the rail here. If I get too much angle, I can go draw back here. Straight in is no good because I've got the 15. So I want to end up somewhere here. That's not bad. Little bit steep of an angle. Let me check this. If I come over here, right, I can go one, two for the 15. That's not too bad, but I, I gotta get around here. This is too high. I need to get there. I think that's what I'm gonna try. Now I want to go two rails up and down. <clears throat> See that is exactly as planned. I take five new balls without looking. See it's mixing up. There, 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 there. Okay, so new layout. 15 was still the last ball I got to shoot. What's the lowest numbered ball? The 5. So I go 15, 5, 6, 7, 9, 14. When I get to the 14, get yourself an angle and stop again. Put up for 5 new ones. Okay, I got a little bit flat, so I think I'm gonna follow it out. Come here again. Bit soft. I can roll this one in with a touch of outside, I think. Give yourself an angle on the 14 to go anywhere on the table. There. So we're on a run of 10 balls. Put up five new ones. Right, just set them up. So we got 14, and the next ball is the 3. So this is challenging. <clears throat> the 8's in the way to come here. I could play it here again. Leaves me a cut shot, and the 14 would be gone, so I could go here, here, here. I think that's not bad. Another option would be to hit harder, come here and here. But I could end up straight in or even scratch. So I'm thinking I'm going to try and hit the rail here. Gives me more security. That's a bit weak. That's a bit weak. Let's see if I can still do it. This is tough. Try to 
drilled first. Let's set up that ball again because I want to show you if you're struggling with the shot, you break it down. You take that shot. That's how you get better. So I was here. <clears throat> I need a little bit more low lift. Better still, yeah, that's a bit better. It was never going to be easy. There, that's what I was trying to play. Good shot. And here you go off this rail, bump the rails, guys. Bump this rail, come there. This is just a tip of spin, not much. Boom. Come back for the same angle here for the nine. This is 45 degrees. In the middle is 22 and a half. That's super. That's ideal for these kind of shots. Do you see it? For these shots crossing over, Coming back and forth, 22 and a half degrees is awesome. There, just a hair short, that's fine. Coming two rails now. There. Alright. Let's make it a little bit tougher. We're going to add three more balls in the middle. Nine pointed star. If you're having trouble with six, you stay with six. Okay? Until you start running 20s. If you can run some 20s, then you go to nine. I would suggest. And these drills were made by Bert Kinnister. I've been doing these drills since I was 20 years old and uh, I just love them. I think they're great drills for uh, rotation games and uh, I did them a lot <laughs> and I still like now if I haven't been playing much if I do half an hour of this I just feel good about my stroke I feel good about how, how you hit the ball it's just a great drill so 10 was the last ball we go 10 1 Two, now it gets interesting guys, we got to get from the two down to the four, how do we do that? Let's have a look, we can get, if we get kind of this angle on the two, we could follow it one rail down for the four, uh, yeah I think that's the best because any other route, the nine and seven are in the way, only other thing was, would be to get under the two and go this way, but that's very hard to do. So I'm thinking somewhere here would be pretty good. That means that means that I need to be almost straight on in on this one ball, which is not easy. I need to get on this side of the side pocket and just bump the rail. tricky part. Let's try that again. See that's why we're practicing. Yep I made a mistake so what? I'm setting it up again and the next time I hit it I'm a better player. Just want to touch that rail. That's nice. Or here. See, that's, that's cue ball control. You learn how high and low you got to hit it. That was like stun shot, a tiny bit of spin. Too much spin and I'm boom, in the drink. So here, low right. 
come out here. Not too much, uh, low left, sorry, not too much. That's what we were talking about, that angle, right? So here, <clears throat> what's tricky is even with me putting no spin on this ball, the cue ball will pick up some right spin from the contact on the two. So the cue ball will do this. And I don't really want to do that because I'm going to end up here. Yeah, so I have to counter that with a touch of inside spin. Some left spin is going to come here, and then I want to let it come here. And anywhere, I would say anywhere here would be really, really nice. <clears throat> Let's see what we can do. So, I think if it's a clock, it would be 11 o'clock on the cue ball. Bit too soft. Bit too soft. See, because now I'm in trouble because of this eight ball. If the eight wasn't there, it would be fine. Now I have to hit the rail here. Tricky shot. Try the two ball again. I'm more interested in the two ball for now. See, this is how you're also going to go through this drill. You're not going to run out every rack. So you set up the shot where you broke down. That's the key. Don't set up a new layout, and you're not going to learn anything. bit better. The angle I want is to go here and then here. I think I can just get away with it now. Load it up with inside. No, I have cheated a bit. Let me just show you how it looks. See from a little bit above this diamond. Yeah, from the middle diamond, it's really, really nice the position. That's where it's really basic. Just high right. Ooh. Try one more time. Still getting a little slide on this cloth. Playing really nice. Hit that rail, that's your goal. And now here, uh, we want to get kind of straight in on the six. Come there for the eight. This ball is not allowed to go to the side. So this is just stunned with a touch of right spin. Medium soft. Me talking about all the way I'm hitting the ball is distracting me. Uh, let's see. There. Alright. Let's draw it back out. That's the angle I wanted. Now I can follow it up, but again I'm going to get a little bit of uh, friction spin because I'm hitting the ball on the left and the cue ball wants to do this, so I need to put a touch of right spin on it to bring it back in line. There's the right spin. Okay, this is interesting guys. This is going to be my last ball. And the next lowest ball could be anywhere on the table. Here, here, here. 
So I need an angle on this guy to allow me to shoot any ball. So where would that be? If I'm over here, it's really hard to get down there. If I'm over here, it's really hard to get here. Or this one. So I'm thinking straight in would be good. If I get straight in, I shoot this ball, this ball, this, this. I can pretty much get anywhere. So I'm thinking get to this zone here. That's my goal. So you set up eight new balls now. <clears throat> How many we got? We got four, seven. I like to mix them up a little bit. So it's eight. And you just go boom, boom, boom. Just set them up, don't let your brain fool you. Okay, now here's the next layout. So we got the nine, we got one, two. From the one I can go here for the two, come here for the four, to the five, to the six. This is laying pretty nice. I just want to stun this ball forward. This is middle ball. Middle ball. Put a little bit of a stroke on it. And here you want to get past the side. Yeah, I can feel that my stroke is warming up. I want to draw this ball back, come here, <clears throat> and cross it over, get into the angle on the five. Try to play into your next position shot, not crossing the line, you're playing into the line. Hard, so I can't I can't play into the line now because I'm going to scratch. So I got to cross the line. I have to bump this rail and come back out for an angle. Try to bump that rail, guys. Otherwise, you can't end up without a shot or on top of a ball. So this teaches you to pass the five. One tip of spin. Not enough spin, but I got there. Here, straight in on the six is fine. It's the hair off the reel. And personally, I like to lag these balls in. For some reason, if I just roll them, I, I, end, I end up missing them a lot because it just freaky. It rolls off a bit. I have to hit them softer. So if I drag them with low spin, as you can see here, see I can just hit him a little harder and I even didn't hit that ball very good, but it's pocket speed and the pocket accepts, it, uh, accepts the ball. So three balls left. Interesting again. This is going to be my last guy. I need an angle on him to get anyone on the table. If I get on the low side, I can't get down again for a ball. So I have to stay on this side, I think. This angle. That means bump the rail here for the 8, slightly, get this angle, draw it back, like we did before.
didn't touch the rail there, I wanted to bump into the rail, come out. So now I have to make a little correction. Because I don't want to be frozen on the rail here now. I want to come around here. But this would be my goal. So I have, this, I have to hit this a little bit harder. And that's like a stun draw shot, guys. It's not stun, because then the cube will do this. It's not draw, then it does this. It's one tip above draw and a tip under stun, stun draw. So you're coming there. All right, that was a nice little runny. If you start running 20s and 30s with this, you're really starting to control the cube all nicely. How many we got? We got three, six, one ball. All right, set them up. Two, two, two. One more rack. Boom, 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 ding, ding, ding. Okay, so what's the layout? So we gotta go from the 15 to the 1. Let's make it a little more interesting because that's just a high ball. Let's say it was like this, guys. Because I have to get that angle, remember, to get anywhere on the table. So, this would be probably one of the tougher shots because I have to get back to that side. So, how can I do that? Well, I gotta dive into this corner. I gotta dive into this corner pretty deep and avoid the 14. And then I need an angle to come back to the 3. So it's like uh, two balls next to the scratch, I would say. There, there, and there. Just avoid it to 14. Nice little shot. What's the next one? We got three, and then the eight. So. Pretty straight and on the three is fine because the nine's here. So I'm thinking I'm going to draw past the side. A little more comfortable. There. Uh, I think I'm going to drag this one in again because I need a flat angle. Like that. Here. See, you keep coming up with the same kind of angles. It's going to give you a lot of power, guys. So you get a lot of confidence from this. We need that angle again around here to go one, two, three on the ten. Remember, we did that before. So this is where you start recognizing stuff. Just a little bit of high right, not too much because you'll hit the 12. Not enough. Try that again. Sometimes when you're on the rail, it's a little bit trickier. It's harder to put that right spin on there. Let's see if I can make an adjustment. Analyze the shot, see what's going on. I'm here. Let me see. Because I'm because the because of the cloth, I have a harder time hitting coming here. So maybe it's better to come here. Let's see if that plays a little more natural. So now I just want to hit it with a high ball.
You know, play is more natural on a sliding table. So that's good, learn something there. Uh, punch this one out. Get yourself that angle on the 12. It's not enough. No spin. I, I personally, I hate those shots. I always want to like draw them out or follow them out. That, that one rail straight up, I just, it's like a snooker shot. I never really enjoyed it on a, with a pool ball. I feel like if I just don't hit it right, it's going to go that way. So, let me demonstrate the other way. It would be like this. I personally like that better. Uh, let's see. Now again, think about the last ball, guys. We want to get straight in, I think, on the last ball. So we need to be straight in on the 13 or somewhere here. That's fine too. Now I can go two rails out of the corner and come into my line of straight in. There. Okay. I hope you enjoyed that one. See, now I'm straight in again. I can continue my run. Now the last thing I wanted to show you for today, we're going to do this 30 minutes. And... Uh, one second. Come on in. Come on. Just take a sip of water. If you got any questions, let me know. Thanks guys, Fred Berlin, Keel Curve, so, Stefano Delino asked me about the last jump cue, wrist is moving a lot, uh, he says on the last jump where you use the cue like this, he says it's easy that the cue balls start curving, well if it's this small of a jump, there's, there's actually no way it can curve because it's almost going to land on the ball. Now, if you're talking like this, or maybe that's the one he meant, this one, where I was shooting over this ball, then it starts curving, uh, then maybe you're putting too much spin on the ball. I shoot this like a normal shot, maybe on this shot, maybe just one tip of spin, just helping English, right? As soon as it touches here, it's going to help the ball go in. I'm not hitting it all the way on the outside because then it means it's going to curve. So maybe you're putting too much spin on it if it starts curving out of line or it could be your jump stick. Some jump cues are way more flexible than others. I have a really old uh, jump cue that I use. It's really stiff. Uh, works for me. So maybe experiment with that. Okay. Good. Any other questions real quickly? I use a, a scorpion jump cue. But let me see what the still sign. No more questions, I believe. Alright, now what I've been doing this week, because I didn't practice much. I call this playful practice, and I'll demonstrate. I'll throw the balls on the table, like this. Boom. Like this. And I start with a medium hard shot on the one. And I want to try and run out. And sometimes it's fun. Like for example, uh, like this, 
I'm going to do something like this to make clusters because you hear me talk about Efren a lot. I spoke about him before. In my career, when I saw Efren practice by himself, there was basically always 15 balls on the table. And the layouts he put on the table was just like, why would you put make it that difficult? He would put like eight balls on the long rail. You know why? Because he liked to challenge himself and he thought it was fun. And he thought like, if I can run this kind of rack, everything else will be easier, right? And even if he messed it up, who cares? But man, you see the caroms and the banks and that's when you really saw like this guy's from, a, from another level because the stuff he would still run out or three, four, five balls in a row when there was nothing there. That's really the next level in my opinion. So I think it's fun. Sometimes you just put the balls on the table, set up some clusters or put them on the, like a couple on the rail, uh, you know, like this, whatever. And it, what happens is instead of me putting out nine balls on the table and I just get bored, I start daydreaming, I start thinking about all other stuff, it's not interesting for me personally. So you have to throw an amount of balls on the table where you think it's going to be challenging for you, but not too challenging. So for some, 15 is way too much, but maybe 10 balls is really nice, right? So. Do something with 10 or maybe 11 and make it a little funky. I call it playful practice. I don't care if I run out. I want to get into situations where I'm thinking, hey, this is interesting. I can open up the ball that way. Maybe there's a carom or I can bank. And if I sometimes run five in a row, uh, it's I, I still feel like, whoa. Plus, my execution stays pretty high because there's a lot of balls on the table. It's tough. And my focus is pretty high. So even if I do this for an hour... I get some good practice, right? Don't do this every day. It's just to mix it up a little bit. Playful practice. So, let's see. For example, I'm just going to open up this one just for now. I'm going to start with this one. And I see I've got to open up the three. I need a big angle to cut it in and go there. Let's see what's going to happen, right? So here, this is this is challenging. This is this is crazy. I mean, what can I have? If I hit it, I got. If I hit it full in the face, not sure. Maybe here, there's no good. I think. I just want to hit it. I mean, sometimes you cannot really calculate this one. And even if I mess it up, I might set it up again because I'm going to learn something right away from this shot. Just hit it too thin. See, I can't really run out anymore. But let's say, let's try one more time. So I see there. Okay, if I hit it too thin, I'm not getting anything. Playful practice. I was always considered, and some people took it over the edge that I was like training 20 hours a day. And everything was machine-like, but this is stuff I also like to do. When I was younger, yes, I did way more drills, more structured. And it comes to a point where you get to a certain level and it's harder to stimulate yourself. So this is stuff that I like to do and I learn a lot from the Filipinos. So I try to bring that into my game. Almost got there. One more try. I don't think I was quite over this nine balls. Let's see. See, this is really hard. I got a six. I got a side pocket. See, this is next level stuff. No. Nope. Tricky. See, I'm lear I'm learning here. You might think, what is he doing? But I'm actually having fun. 
because this is challenging. I'm, I'm running into something like, man, i got to hit this ball really well. Pretty poor. Let's see if I just open them up. What happens? Okay. Tough shot. Okay, so I just I just keep going. Alright. Let's see if I end up here. Try to hit the 13, then I got an angle on the four. I got a combination. There. See, this is interesting. The five will move here. So I have to follow the cue ball here out. Give myself a shot to this corner. Okay, now things are starting to open up a little bit. This is still interesting stuff. Uh, let's see, the 7 goes from here. If I get past the 9, oh yeah. This is where it gets nice and pinpoint. It's great for your game. You gotta come here for the seven. Fifteen balls on the table is the nuts. You see all the Filipinos do that. Corteza does it a lot. Got past that ball. Here's from the last drill we did, right? Nine point and start. Come back out here. Soft, but that's fine. Okay. Just thinking if we could bump out the 12, that would be fun to do. Yeah, that's nice. See, I can just play it here and I play combo, but just again, make it a little more playful. Let's see if I can bump out the 12, bring it into play, make it even easier. just passes the 13. Uh, jack up. Now even, you can just run out or you can say, okay, I'm going to bank the last two. Play for practice. No good, set it up. So again, you get the idea, throw them out there. Here, let's, let's show an example how, how I see it for doing sometimes. I'm like, what the? Like this. It'll start off like this. It's like, what in the world? What do you, what do you want to do? I mean, okay, what do I see? This, I mean, this is challenging. Hallelujah. I'm 
I'm thinking a stop shot on the two, or on the one. Come there, fall in between them balls, and then try to open them up here. A funky little shot. I gotta fall in between a four five, uh, three four. So it's not a stun because then I'm coming here. Could work, but you could also end up there. My goal is to come there. But it's like a middle ball. Uh, no, middle ball, tip higher than middle, touch of outside. get to the interesting part. We need an angle to open up this five. Are we going in one rail? Or are we going in two rails? If I hit the seven, seven goes, cue ball hits there, five goes there. That might not be bad. If I hit the 14, I gotta hit it with a little bit of speed, I think. I think I'm going for that route. So that's about here would be nice. Are you guys with me? Follow this pattern. Crazy playful practice, this rack. Boom. So we gotta come. Ding ding. We gotta come with the cue ball. It's a good tip. You just visualize where you want to hit on the rail about. So I'm thinking somewhere there. That brings me in contact with the 14 or the 7. Mind you, this table is slidey, so i got a bit too much angle. I'm afraid it's going to come there, so I've got to hit it a hair softer than I want. Oh man, it still went there. Unbelievable. I got really close there of hitting the 7. Let's try one more time. Ooh. Close. So now what do you do? Well, I'm thinking if I hit this guy full in the face, seven it's the eight, eight off the fifteen. Inside. So come here. Let's try it. How do you like them apples? That's a pretty nice shot there. Okay. Roll in the combo. Cue ball hits the fourteen. Angle on the five to go to the six. There. Tricky angle. Uh, I think just a touch of draw and inside spin. It's got to go slow. Too slow? No. Okay. See, I'm already pretty proud there. I made four balls in a row, but from crazy positions. So that's like, that, that's, it's just cool. It's just fun. Uh, let's see. I can draw a ball here. Come back out here, maybe. And then swing it around. Now the rack is really opening up, but you can still see this 14's block in this 9, so I could play this route, which 
which is something I don't like to do normally, so that's exactly why I'm going to do it now for training. So, no right spin, just a bit of draw. Still a bit of right. But oh, that's good. I want to come a little more flat, but this is fine. And now everything's open. See, if I would just put the balls out for myself like this, six, seven, eight balls, I would just get so bored. I want to challenge myself. With these freaky things. And it also gives me a good feeling, you know, if I if I do crazy stuff like that, like a kick shot carom, it makes me feel, and that's not to sound arrogant, but it makes me feel like a good player. It means like, hey, I got this, I can do that, and it gives me just a nice feeling about my game. <clears throat> if that makes sense. Nicely open. Let's go two rails. Ding, ding. See, and that's why I should have been on the Moscone Cup. You know, they needed me. No, just kidding. <laughs> they did so well, it's amazing. So here again, I could I could just make this bar. I'm gonna say, you know what? I'm gonna bank it. fun. So let's set up something crazy again. Let's do something like uh, like, like what I saw Efren do. Let's set up a bunch of balls on the long rail. Throw the other ones out. Ding, ding. Get this ball here. All right. How on earth are you going to run out of here? Let's see. Well, I can draw into the 7 right away. Maybe, I think that's what I'm going to just power draw in those balls. Maybe I get something. Let's see. Wow, a little lucky, but that's, I played for that, and I got a combo on the 7-8. So right away, here, I'm going to stun it under the 3, that way I can just bump the rail and come out for the 4. So I want to get a little bit below, I just want to touch the rail. That's always a scary shot. Just too soft. You still get there. Now, I want my angle again on the floor that I can do something, right? This is for the nine point star. That ball could be like on the rail, same shot. So get here and I can get anyone on the table. I gotta dig into this ball with that big angle. Got there. Alrighty. Getting a little bit in open play. Let's see if we can get close to the middle of the table. I don't want to get here. Then the 13 will come into my shot. So I want to get to an angle where I can draw it slightly off the 13. So it means I gotta come somewhere there. Uh, 
What do we do with this guy? Do we try to play straight in? Draw back? It's not easy to do. Or do we run into the seven? And hit it there? Seven there, maybe. These balls are kind of in the way, otherwise you would play for the corner much more easy. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I think that's what I have to try and do, because I can't really land, land straight in because of these balls. So I'm going to give myself an angle and open up the six, uh, the seven. Alright. I think it's even going to bounce off for the side pocket. I have to make a commitment now. I'm going to look at the 90 degree angle and I'm going to hit this ball. Let me see, it's going to be about there. It's tricky. My gut tells me it's going right here and then there. So, yeah, what a nasty shot. Can I play it? Can I play it uh, in between there? Like this? Then the Q will hit the 9, 7 ends up here maybe for the side? Could be an option. Let's see if that works. See, that's exactly what happened. I was hoping it was going to glance off more. I can still make it inside. See, you're working on your shot making. You're being creative. You're doing stuff you've never done before sometimes. Playful practice. Yeah. Uh, bu, 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 bu. See what I'm afraid of now is this 12 ball. It's got to come there. And if, if I go back here, this guy is the size of a watermelon. Uh, okay, so I'm, I'm going to focus more on making this ball in the position. I take it anywhere from here. Anything. Or, you know what? You know what? You know what? I was thinking of a carom in the side. Let's do that for fun sakes. Let's shoot it off the 14. Learn something. About there. Let's see. Try one more time. Two full. Ball was here. That ball was there. Something like that. So it was too full of a hit. Let's see if I even pin out what happens. I drew it in the side. No, it's going to come too thick. Okay. Learn something there. Let's bank this ball in. Okay. You know what? Let's bank another one in. Because we're on a roll. Something creative here. 
Let's see if we can come three rails and just clip one of these two balls to open them up. That would be, that'd be a really nice shot without scratching there. Let's see. Scratch. Got to come a little deeper. See, I'm just, I'm just fooling around a bit. But I'm getting better at the same time from these new shots. Hit it. Yep. See? That's cool. And now it goes in the corner. How the hell do we get there? <laughs> I think we're coming here, 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 there. See the new cloth? That's what happens a lot. It just breaks. That's why you see you guys on TV. You sometimes hit those balls softer because it just dies. You have to settle for a, for a different shot. Just goes. But I want to play a carom. Be more, be a little more fun. I think a touch of right spin. Do wrong. I hit it too thin. Too thick. That's a tricky shot there. Maybe no spin. Let's bank this guy, go around the table. There. See you're working on your banks a little bit. Draw it over here. Let's try to make them both. Ooh, just for fun. This guy. You know what? Just because I want to hit one safety, just cross it over, land it on the middle of the short rail. There. It's nice. See, play for practice. You can hit a couple of kicks if you like. Who cares? You're learning something. Too slow. One rail to here. Bit soft. Almost got there. Guys, you get the idea? That was playful practice, you know, something different instead of doing the same thing over and over again. Then, tomorrow again, you can be a little bit more structured. Go back to your regular routines. But it's also just fun. See what you can do. Uh, expand on your uh, arsenal. Okay? So, remember the big news, guys. Tuesday, the main mental course is going to be chopped up into four. Right? Big, big thing. I can reach more of you guys. Prices are much cheaper, starting from $59. Uh, all great content. I've added new videos. Monday's early bird discount, 10%. So make sure you sign up for that. Stay tuned. Uh, besides that, have fun with this. Let me know how you're progressing. If you want to do one-on-one -on -one sessions, please send me a personal, uh, personal message on Instagram or Facebook. If you want match reviews, I can do that. So it's really cool. I make a uh, recording of the computer. I can use the mouse to show you the angles and how you could have played shots. Tactics works fantastic. Already did it for a few people. They loved it. Uh, Training plans. Uh, 
one on one sessions, match reviews. That's it. Take care, peace out, and stay tuned for Tuesday. All the best.